uh, see you you all can do calculations on paper but like i said try and avoid it right like like for example 35 percent of 580 try to calculate this mentally how can you uh, do this mentally see 35 percent is not 35 percent 35 percent is 30 percent plus 5 percent so instead of taking 35 percent of 580 i would take 30 percent of 580 plus 5 percent of 580 or in fact i would you know take it as 10 percent plus 10 percent plus 10 percent plus 5 percent See, it, it may look like lengthy, it, it may appear to be lengthy, but if you have practiced enough, you really get the answer very quickly. See, 10% of 580 is 58. 58 should be taken three times because we want 30%. So, 58 into 3 is how much? 150 plus 24 is 174. 5% of 580, 10% is 58. So, 5% will be half of it, which is 29. 174 plus 29. Don't add 29, add 30. Because adding 29 is difficult, adding 30 is very easy. So 174 plus 30, 204. But you know that you were supposed to add 29 only. You had added 30. So one extra was added. Compensate for that. So subtract 1. So 204 minus 1, 203. So mentally, without putting pen on paper, I can say that 35% of 580 is 203. It is because I was explaining it to you while doing it myself, it has taken so much of time. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't take more than four or five seconds. And if I can do it in four or five seconds, I'm sure even you can do that. It's just about practice. So 203 plus 70 percent of some value is equal to 441. Now you know that 203 when taken to the other side will become minus 203. So 400 minus 200 is 200. 41 minus 3 is 38. So this is 238. 70 percent is 238. You're getting it. So question mark will be equal to what? Basically 238 by 70 percentage. So in 200 by 70, it's, it's all about dividing 238 by 7. Once you do that, you're through because the zeros and all you just have to play with. So, so don't, don't write in 200 by 70 and all that. You know that if you can divide 238 by 7, it will give you the answer. How much is 238 by 7? 210 plus 28. So split this 238, you know, intelligently. 238 is not 238. 238 is 210 plus 28. Why 210 plus 28? Because this way both are divisible by 7. So I'll try to take the nearest multiple of 7 uh, in 238. Now 210 by 7 is 30. 28 by 7 is 4. 30 plus 4, 34. 238 by 7 is 34. But what we want is 0. 0.7. Because 70% is 0. 0.7. So 238 by 7 is 34. 238 by 0. 0.7 will be 340. So your answer to this question is 340, which is option 2. Question mark squared plus 164 squared is equal to 307 squared minus 272 right now when you look at the options options end with 1 9 again 1 again 9 and fifth option is none of this now the moment you see none of this there should be a doubt in your mind because i mean you you should you should uh, realize that applying unidigit method or uh, you know method like a digital root method may be risky because fifth option is none of this if all the five numbers are given then there is a high chance that these methods would work when there is none of these given to you there is always a risk involved so you must be prepared to take the risk with with that none of these right now let's assume that you are prepared to take the risk so what do you do will you go for unit digit method let's try unit digit method will work here if and only if we get to know that answer will not end with one or nine if i know that the answer will not end with one or nine all the four options will get eliminated then definitely fifth option is correct but that's that that is rare i mean we don't know whether it will really happen or not i mean we'll, we'll get to know only if you apply the technique so let us apply the technique let's let's start with unidigit method see what happens so question mark square we don't know what this will end with let's say this value will end with some question mark plus are you able to follow we'll try to find out the unit spaces so i don't know what the unit space of question mark square will be but when a number ends in four the square would end with six when a number ends with four the square ends with six equals to Look at this one, 307 square. When the number ends in 7, the square ends with 9. Minus this number 272 ends with 2. Simply, right? Straight it ends with 2. So these are the unit spaces. We are trying to find out what will come in the unit space of question mark square. Now you see, one number ends in 9, the other number ends in 2. The difference will end with what? 7. The difference here is 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. Here we have one number ending, ending in 6. So obviously, this number has to end with 1. Yes or no? Question mark square has to end with 1. Only then it is balanced. So 1 plus 6 is 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. So what do we get to know? From this, we get to know that the question mark square will be ending with 1. But remember, we are supposed to find out what comes in place of question mark. Question mark square ends in 1. 
so don't don't eliminate 189 and 259 because the answer should end with one either 151 or 211 don't eliminate 189 and 259 because that is wrong remember we have to find out what comes in place of question mark what we have got here is the question mark squares unit space are you able to follow what we have found here is the question mark squares unit space we have not found the question marks unit space now next step if a square ends in one then the number would end with what either one or nine are you able to follow when the square of a number ends with one then the number ends with what either ends with one or nine like for example 11 square 11 square ends with 121 i mean ends with one 19 square 361 ends with one so it can be 11 or 19 in both the cases the number ends with one in both the squares the number ends with one so the point here is the actual number which comes in place of question mark may end with one or nine so that is the nice that is the reason i said don't eliminate uh, option two and option four because option two and option four are also possible answer can be 151 or 189 or 211 or 259 all are possible answers and of course none of this is also possible so after spending 10 seconds we get to know that unit space method is not helping here you're able to follow in fact before applying unit space method you must understand that there is a risk involved we would have been very lucky if the answer has to end with 2 or 3 or 4 because none of the options end with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. But that did not happen here. So we have to go for the next step. Right? Next step. Now what do we want to do? Unit space method didn't work. This method didn't work. Right? What shall we do now? Let us go for root digit method. Shall we go for root digit method? See, if you want to do the calculation, you can do it. 164 square, you find out. 307 square, you can find out. You can take the differences and you can, you can do all that. But, I mean, if that is the method that you want to follow, then you can do it yourself. You don't need me for that. Let us, let us solve it using technique, right? Some technique. So, unit digit didn't really help. You can go for other techniques like uh, digital root method or root digit method, right? Or then there is something called as approximations, right? You can do an approximate calculation to find out what is the possible answer. Like for example, let, let us eliminate some options using approximation. Let, let us go for approximate calculation. What happens? See, look at this. Approximation, approximately, I mean, this was unit space method, unit digit method. Now let us go for approximation. Right? When you apply approximation, what happens? Question mark square as it is, plus 164 square. Let us assume 164 square is 160 square. 160 square will be what? 2,56,000. Oh, sorry, 25,600. 16, uh, 16 square is 256. 1, 0 will become 2 zeros. I mean, when you are squaring it. So, 25,600 equals to, understand, 307 is approximately 300. Approximately, right? I mean, actually, it is much, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it has got a high difference from 300. But then, approximately, let us see. So, 300. 300 square is how much? 90,000. Yes or no? 90,000 minus 272. Now, this 272 can be neglected because 272 in place of, in comparison to 90,000 is negligible. So, forget about this. So, basically, question mark square plus 25,000 or let's say 27,000, 26,000 is equal to 90,000. So, what will come in place of question mark square approximately? Question mark square should be 90,000 minus 25,000. What is 90,000 minus 25,000? 65,000. Approximately 65,000. Are you able to follow? The value in place of question mark will be approximately 65,000. Now look at this. 151 square. Suppose the question mark uh, is equal to 151. 151 square. 151 square will be 22,500. Eliminated. Yes or no? Nowhere close to 65,000. 189 square. 189 square is like 190. 190 square is how much? 36100. 36,100. Is 36,100 anywhere close to 65,000? No. Eliminated. 211 square. 211 square is like 210 square. What is 21 square? 441. 44,100. But we want 65,000. So this also is not possible. 259. Can 259 be taken as 260? Can 259 be taken as 260 approximately? Yes. Now 260 squared is equal to what? 260 square. What is 26 square? You are able to follow. We know that 151, 189 and 211 are not in the range at all. Let us check with 260. What is 26 square? 576. 576. So 260 square will be 57,600. Now I know even 57,600 is far away from 65,000, but you cannot neglect it. We have see we have done an approximation, 
but not very close to the actual values because 164 was taken as 160, 307 was taken as 300. We are actually far away from the real values. Uh, are you getting it? You must be able to gauge that range. Unless you gauge the range properly, you will not be able to. So even if you do an approximate calculation, you will know that 1, 2, 3 are wrong. But is it 4th option or 5th option is still not clear. Maybe you would like to try with root digit method or digital root method. So let's let's look at that. Root digit method. Let's see, will root digit method help us or not? Right? Sorry, I think uh, 676. I made a mistake here. 26 square is 676, not 576. But anyway, 676, yeah, 67,600 is very close to 65,000. Even if you had got 576, I would say don't neglect because uh, we had done too much of approximation in 307 and 164 in, in this step here, right? Anyway, 26, 260 square is 67,600, very close to 65,000. So either fourth option is the answer or fifth option is the answer. So if you are ready to take a chance, you can mark option four. Because see, option four satisfies unit space or uh, option four satisfied unit space. It also satisfies approximation. So high probability. But let us see root digit method, right? Let us see root digit method. See what happens. In root digit method, what do you do? Question mark square is question mark plus, I mean, let me write the question. 164 square equals to 307 squared minus 272. Now, I hope all of you know the root digit method. Don't ask me to explain the method here. We'll simply apply it. If you want to understand the method, go watch the simplifications video. Okay. So, root digit method now. See, according to root digit method, we are trying to find out what will happen, what will be the result of this question mark square. Now, 307. Add, what is the root digit of 307? 3, 3 plus 0 plus 7, 10. Root digit of 10 is 1. 1 square is 1. So I can say this is 1. Minus. What is the root digit of 272? 2 plus 7, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. 11 will give you root digit of 2. Equals 2. Root digit of 164? 164 is, uh, uh, you know, 164. 6 plus 4, 10 plus 1, 11. 11 is 2. 2 square is 4. Root digit is 4. Question mark square plus. So what will be the root digit of question mark square here? Try to understand. Question mark square. See, 1 minus 2 is not minus 1. I had explained this in the video there. If it is 1, you can take it as 10. 1, I mean root digit is 1. For 10 also the root digit is 1. You can take 100, 10, 1000, whatever you want. Right? So let's take 10. 10 minus 2, 8. So question mark square equals to or question mark square plus root digit 4 equals to 10 minus 2, 8. So what will come in place of question mark square here? 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 is 4. That means the root digit of question mark square is 4. Root digit of question mark square is 4. Let us check that. Let us check that for this option, option 4. You have to check that for other options as well. But since we have already eliminated, I am not wasting our time. Check that for 259 square. Check that 259 square. So put 259 in place of question mark. What is the root digit of 259? Root digit of 259 is 7. Right? Root digit of 259 is 7. Now, don't say option 4 is eliminated because the root digit of 259 is 7. You're getting it? 259's digital root is 7. 7 is not matching with 4. So, don't eliminate because this is question mark square. So, 259 square. 259 square implies 7 square. 7 square root digit, uh, 7 square result is 49. For 49, the root digit is 4. Is it matching or not? Balanced or not? Balanced. So, even this condition is satisfied. So, Still, there is a risk. I mean, if you say there's actually a risk, you have to do the complete calculation because fifth option is none of this. But, you know, now that you know three options have been eliminated, you can go for fourth option.